Our next speaker will be David Buckley from University of Missouri. Great, I've been in University of Missouri in Kansas, so I've been there. Um, we'll talk about concentration and anonymization of the B functional proline catap catabolic enzyme proline utilization A put A described by small and <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, from Jack Tanner's lab, who's a huge, oh, a huge, we're huge fans of Jack's work. Yeah, long time user as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for the introduction. And uh, yeah, my name is David. And um, just want to first off start by thanking the organizers for having me, um, uh, give me the opportunity to speak today. Uh, this is my first time at the ALS, and it's been a really awesome uh, experience. And um, yeah, uh, so the concentration dependent polymerization of, uh, of PADE is the enzyme that I'll be talking about. And um, this uh, enzyme really provides a awesome uh, example of really an array of structural techniques. Um, so this is just kind of a highlight or an overview of my talk. Um, I'll start out by discussing a little bit about uh, the background of SMPA. And then I know uh, this is a SACS workshop, but I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of these techniques I talked about and a little bit of the limitations and how I think uh, the, the SACS data really fills in the gaps in, in, in some cases. Um, with the SACS, I'll be talking about two different parts. This concentration dependent oligomerization with uh, the wild type uh, folic enzyme. And then uh, the second part will be um, a, a different construct of SMPA where uh, a full domain has been deleted and then uh, how that has uh, an impact on the dimerization. So to get started, um, uh, yeah, this is SMPA. Uh, it stands for Cyanorhizobium Melorlati Proline Utilization A, uh, definitely a mouthful. Uh, it comprises uh, Pro-DH and G-cell H domains, um, and together they achieve what's uh, absolutely critical in all living organisms, which is proline catabolism, or the overall conversion of proline to glutamate. So um, we're looking at the uh, bacterial uh, SM per day in this case, but these individual enzymes, Pro-DH and g cell H, uh, have um, in humans, for example, uh, they're monofunctional uh, entities that have implications in various diseases. But uh, again, the purpose of uh, today's talk will just be uh, focusing on this model and understanding its oligomerization. And um, while I highlighted Pro-H and g cell H, uh, this little domain here in white, uh, I'll, be, I'll be talking a bit about its impact on uh, dimerization and how uh, it contributes to a lot of flexibility of the protein. Uh, and then overall, just an understanding of um, the biological dimer that can be uh, present. So I wanted to start off with um, a limitation with alpha-fold that I've uh, noticed. So the title of this uh, slide will be uh, alpha-fold prediction absolutely requires uh, knowledge of the oligomer. So uh, we're looking at uh, chain A or one chain of the crystal structure, or A crystal structure of SM A. And what I've kind of uh, represented here is a ribbon diagram, but um, I took all the crystal structures of SM Pare and identified the base uh, model. So that is to say, these beads here are representing areas where um, none of the crystal structures have um, residues present or um, there's some, some disorder. So the N terminus is in the blue bead, the uh, uh, C terminus is in the red bead, and then this alpha domain, which uh, mentioned was white in the previous slide, I can highlight it again, um, has some very characteristic uh, missing residues and contributes to a lot of the uh, disorder in crystal structure. Um, so with alpha fold, uh, in green now, this is um, an alpha fold prediction of just the monomer. And I can kind of uh, flip back and forth here. So alpha fold back to the crystal uh, structure and show that um, overall, the alpha fold uh, prediction of, of just one chain does a decent job with uh, most the, 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 the most important domain is the proteation to the age, but for this uh, flexible region, it is having a pretty big discrepancy compared to the crystal structure. And um, I can go back to uh, the crystal structure, and then now I'm plotting, or uh, overlaying rather, um, the alpha fold prediction uh, using uh, two chains. Uh, so with alpha fold three, as um, yeah, I had a question earlier about uh, kind of 
improving potentially alcohol applicable uh, SACS data, but uh, if you provide two chains um, to hopefully predict the oligomeric state, um, you can get a result like this, where uh, now we have a much better uh, agreement of the alpha domain compared to the crystal structure. Um, so another view of this is I can bring in the other chain from the crystal structure, and this really highlights that this alpha domain uh, comprises a lot of the crystal contacts that are important for forming the, the diamond to begin with. Uh, so again, um, showing that if you only get a one chain for the prediction, there's a huge uh, disagreement and, and a clash with what would be the other uh, chain in that case. And then I can just show again, just the yeah, alpha dimer. So uh, in this case, uh, knowledge of the liquid is absolutely critical for getting a good model. And um, you might think, or you might question, why would we care about an alpha hole model if we have a, a high resolution crystal structure? But uh, with the molecular dynamics that I uh, will be showing towards uh, the layer portion, uh, filling in those missing loops that I highlighted um, is really useful. And so getting an accurate model is uh, really, really helpful. And then, um, taking a second to load here, um, we've collected crop RN data on SMPDM. And uh, there's a bit more data that I would like to collect to try to improve the resolution as well as the um, uh, orientation uh, distribution. But so far, uh, I've been able to achieve about 4.1 inch uh, structure. Um, and I wanted to highlight that um, so far, it seems like probably is really sort of limited in only uh, able to represent the monomer of SMPD. Uh, and this is because um, I think um, it's kind of lauded with CryoEM that you don't need that much protein to uh, run experiments, which is an advantage in a lot of cases. But in the case for uh, oligomerization, uh, it's actually kind of uh, a limiting factor because the, the grid that was, uh, uh, the data that was collected on here was uh, set at a concentration of 0.75 mg per mil. And as we'll see, um, that's too low of a concentration to really get um, a good representation of the dimer. Um, and in this case with cryoEM, if you bump up the concentration too much, maybe your micrographs are going to be too crowded, and you're not going to get a good reconstruction. So. Now getting into the um, SACS data. So earlier, uh, it was mentioned that ab initio models were not uh, super desirable, so I decided to show nine ab initio models uh, <laughs> with uh, densest reconstructions here. But um, I, I like this just as uh, an overview of kind of the data that I'll be uh, talking about. So there's two sets of uh, data in the top row is from one to four mg per mil uh, from 2016 from a, a, it's a Luo et al. paper from our group, uh, our group in 2016. And then the bottom uh, row of data is uh, what was collected uh, this year. And actually, uh, John G from our lab is in the uh, uh, Zoom call and collected this data. So thank, thank you very much uh, for Juan. Um, and it's a really nice, um, comparison that can be drawn between the two data sets where um, in 2016, it seems like there's um, a really nice description of the monomer uh, for SMPDE, whereas this new, new data set, we're able to achieve um, higher concentrations um, and, and our scattering profiles uh, turn out to be quite nice uh, in order to um, represent the dimer. And my computer is dying. Um, if I was just on the wrong. Okay, I think it's charging now. Um, so really this new data uh, supplements well what was uh, first collected for SMPD. Uh, getting into the SACS profile, so the 2016 data goes from one to four mg per mil. Um, and really uh, the characteristic thing to see here excuse me, is that the low concentration uh, profile is relatively linear at the intermediate Q region, whereas um, for the higher concentration around 4 mg per mil that has um, dimer characteristics, um, there's a bit of a dip um, in, the, in the intermediate Q region. Uh, and then this is uh, similar to what was collected uh, this year, where at the lowest concentration, it's uh, relatively linear in intermediate Q, uh, but we're able to collect um, a few data sets of much higher concentration. Uh, for some reason, the two and three mg per mil uh, data sets um, uh, didn't 
perform very well. So these are the uh, nice profiles that we were able to collect. Um, and if I uh, overlay the um, uh, the curve, or if I scale the curves to the highest concentration, uh, I think we can see better the effect I was trying to describe, where the lowest concentration has a more linear characteristic uh, in this Q region uh, versus the higher concentrations has, has this uh, bit of a dip. And if I bring back the 24, 24 uh, data sets um, and only use the low and high concentration data sets, um, I can now overlay this with um, what was collected in 2016 and see kind of uh, how they can compare. But this is uh, kind of showing my uh, my uh, newness to using this as uh, I've been I've been using the, the BioXS uh, raw software since um, attending the uh, SACS workshop at ACA. And um, I brought in the 2016 data set from the SAS uh, BDB, and I have had trouble in using the auto like scaling feature um, to uh, overlay the uh, two different data sets, um, in, uh, specifically for like bringing in the, the old data sets. So um, yeah, if, if uh, I could um, uh, speak with um, the experts that could help in uh, getting a more precise uh, scaling, because this was, uh, I essentially just scaled the, the two curves by hand in this case. Um, but it also brought up a, a, a question I had in mind about um, the analysis packages, um, if there's been any uh, dialogue or thought to um, integrate uh, some of the SACS um, PDBs in, in being able to bring up uh, SACS profiles maybe from your analysis package like RAW or, or uh, Primus or something like that. I think that'd be pretty neat um, for making these types of comparisons. Um, and um, getting into a little bit more uh, fine details of the uh, two data sets. Um, overall, I think uh, the 2016 best describes the monomer of SMPD, whereas uh, 2024 best describes the dimer. And I think that's um, uh, apparent when looking at the uh, rates of gyration. So the 2016 data set is in gray, uh, while the 2024 is in uh, uh, this kind of red here. The ideal monomer has a rate of gyration around 32 and a half, uh, whereas the ideal dimer, the rate of gyration is uh, quite a bit larger, around 40. Uh, so you can see here at the different concentrations, uh, the lowest concentration for the earlier data set um, better approaches the ideal monomer compared to our new, new data set. But in contrast, the, uh, data, the data that we've collected this year does a really great job of um, uh, approximating or uh, calculating the RG uh, that is in a, a nice agreement with the ideal value for the dimer. Um, and then the same type of uh, comparison can be drawn with molecular weight, uh, where the uh, earlier data set does a great job um, in its uh, uh, derivation of the uh, molecular weight in, in comparison with the monomer uh, ideal value, um, whereas the uh, newer data set does a better job um, approaching the dimer. But um, both of them, um, it, it kind of struggles getting uh, as good of an agreement as with the RG. Um, so, again, uh, I think these two data sets, uh, it's a nice kind of uh, uh, supplementation of the um, work that was done in 2016, uh, where uh, I, I have this kind of been transparent, but at the highest concentration in 2016 at four mix per mil, um, this was enough to uh, provide evidence that the crystal dimer is in fact the biological, biologically relevant dimer in solution. But now with this uh, newer data set, it, it really robustly describes that. Um, and then as the uh, final portion of, of my talk, I mentioned that um, doing this domain deletion uh, absolutely obliterates the dimer formation um, apparent uh, from SACS. So again, this is the um, crystal structure of the full-length SMP monomer, uh, highlighting this alpha domain. And um, if I overlay uh, the alpha fold uh, prediction of what the uh, structure would look like if you delete this domain. This is now in pink. Uh, I can get rid of the uh, full length, and so it's just uh, trying to remove this um, this 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 domain. Um, the importance of doing this is um, in trying to generate a model for uh, uh, 
uh, performing various um, uh, ligand soaking and uh, co crystallization uh, experiments uh, for protease, which has implications in uh, inhibition studies. But uh, it's been very difficult to um, crystallize so far. So, SACS has been uh, really valuable in um, the early characterization of uh, this new construct that we have. Uh, so, we can see that um, we have a really beautiful uh, set of data here uh, that goes from one to seven mg per mil. Um, and in this case, um, we're absolutely not seeing any uh, indication of the dimer. So, this is likely due to uh, what I described with how much the alpha domain is contributing to the crystal contacts that are forming and those uh, stabilizing uh, interactions that uh, induce dimer formation. Uh, I performed molecular dynamic simulations of this outfold uh, structure that we obtained. So um, I achieved about five microseconds of all atom molecular dynamics for this structure. And um, I'm just showing now a uh, root mean square deviation of the C alphas, um, as well as the FAD, just seeing if there's anything odd going on with the position of the FAD at the protease active site. Uh, and then now on the secondary y axis, uh, I'm plotting chi squared. So I'm using um, command line fox s to, uh, for every nanosecond, uh, do a fitting to, um, I think it was actually the three per mil uh, sex curve that I decided to go with. Um, but we see here at the uh, 727 nanosecond time point, uh, this is a chi squared of about 1.44. Um, and so this is uh, possibly a better candidate um, to represent this constructive SFA with this deletion uh, rather than the alpha fold structure. Um, I could also plot the running um, rates of gyration over the course of the five microseconds. And uh, again, at this 727 nanosecond time point, um, the RG is approaching this uh, range that is defined by uh, the SACS data that we collected. Um, and I'll just highlight uh, this is the alpha fold predicted RG, and it's much lower than the running average as well as the SACS um, derived RGs. Um, and it also turns out that the RG net of the deletion is about equal to the RG of uh, the full <coughs> SFA monomer, which um, there's an interesting uh, uh, idea there with how the alpha domain could be anchoring the two, the two main domains of the protein and uh, creating this ideal spacing for um, allowing uh, substrates to channel from one active site to another. And also just based on the P of R, I think you could probably reason that um, removing that domain actually removes some of the uh, smaller uh, P of R's in that case. So it, it could be a little bit of both of those uh, two, two aspects. Uh, so then this is gonna be, I think one of my so, last- Sorry to interrupt you. Like technical question about how many models do you generate by the AMD? You say five microseconds, but you probably have like every 10 nanometers seconds, one model, or did you have something like that? This one, I did every uh, every nanosecond. Every nanosecond. So it'd be like 5,000. 5,000 models, okay. Technical question. Cool. Yep. It, it would be cool, yeah. I mean, again, it, you know, one of the questions that is in the field these days is about the high Q data. And I assume that uh, your amino acids are allowed to flex. And wiggle and stuff. Yes. And the waters also and stuff like that. Yes. So it would even close confirmations. It would be interesting to know how far you are with the vibrations. Yeah. And also interesting will be when you already, <coughs> sorry, the fox using the command line is exactly as supposed to. And there is also, when you upload the whole package, you have the multi fox command line. Mm -hmm. You can take all those 5,000 5, PDB and run multi fox to see how close you can go. Or if there is possibly to fit with multi states. Mm, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, just the second round command line. Yeah, right there multi fox take PDBs and that's it. It will, it will take all the five thousand PDBs. I see. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I as I was kind of uh, learning how to use the command line process, I, I saw the multi fox option. I was like, I gotta make sure. Yeah, just check that out. Just yeah. next time. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So this has been. Uh, yeah, really, really interesting um, being able to try to best characterize this new construct that we are we're, we're unable to crystallize. Um, so now I'm going to be playing a movie. So this is actually a morph from the alpha fold structure to this sort of like best uh, state from molecular dynamics. 
And I'm highlighting only the protease domain, so that left domain that on that diagram I showed, because this re, uh, these regions colored in red have implications in uh, very specific dynamics uh, at this active site. So we'll see as I play the movie that, um, oh, unfortunately, it's kind of lagging quite a bit, which is not too bad because maybe it kind of slows things down a bit, um, which is good. But when it starts out in the alpha fold structure, uh, there's this bend in this key helix. It's called the alpha-8 um, helix of the protease active site. And I can, um, in the next slide I have actually before and after, I can just kind of go back and forth. Uh, this, this bend is observed crystallographically, so it's not, um, it's not some artifact of alpha fold. So alpha fold did a good job in predicting that. But the thing is, now I'm overlaying um, what would be the full length uh, SM protease structure. So this uh, white uh, outline is the alpha domain that was deleted. So we see on the right, there's actually another hel uh, partial helix that's going down. Um, that's the starting uh, state of alpha fold, which is relatively similar to the crystal structure. But if I go back and forth here, yeah, now at the um, sort of best time point, that right uh, semi helix moved out of the way, which uh, frees up, I think, a lot of room for the main alpha eight helix to uh, straighten out. And there's a pretty big um, conformational uh, change that is happening from the alpha one starting, place, uh, starting point to this next uh, ND, ND frame. And uh, there's also some implications for the C terminus on the left there with um, uh, big, big changes in, the, in, in this loop here. I can kind of go a little bit back and forth once again. Um, yeah, so uh, that's actually, um, I can, Kind of just wrap up by saying um, uh, this enzyme has been yeah ex studied extensively through uh, a lot of different structural techniques, but I think SACS um, really fills in the gaps in some of the areas that are are limiting in um, you know some some of these other uh, uh, structural studies like uh, cryoEM and and, uh, and the crystallography of the enzyme. So uh, with that, I just like to uh, thank my lab and. Um, uh, uh, our main collaborator, uh, the, Beck, uh, the Becker Lab at the University of Nebraska, uh, and then definitely um, thanking uh, Catherine, um, Mikhail, and uh, Greg for uh, the opportunity to talk today, and um, happy to take any questions. Yes. Uh, so I guess this is probably a dumb question, uh, but I guess what I'm wondering is, why are you convinced that your solution state data is biologically relevant when it's concentration dependent? Like, do you know, like, do you have like an estimate of what concentration you would be expecting in the organism? Or do you also, uh, the second question to that would be like, uh, did you do any sort of like a pH scan where you're looking, like maybe you're not actually seeing, like could be concentration dependent, but like it could also just be forcing those salt bridges or hydrogen bonds to form because you're getting more favorable interactions type thing or more favorable collisions. But I'm wondering like what would happen if you change the pH and maybe if the pH reflected what was found in the natural organism. Well, I can just say we, I haven't um, personally done any, any big uh, pH scans or anything uh, to that uh, extent. Um, I think the biological relevance of the dimer, like to your point in, in the cell, uh, it's hard to know exactly what the concentration of, of this enzyme would be, but um, probably uh, a, a bit lower than what's required, uh, you know, lower than what's required for crystallization uh, in that case for sure. But I think this is more just uh, a matter of um, verifying that the crystal dimer is, um, is relevant in solution and um, what kind of uh, interactions are um, involved in that. Uh, and then I think in um, working with this model organism for designing something like a, like a whole deletion of one of the domains, um, I think understanding how that affects um, its potential to, to form uh, larger structures is, is potentially important. Along those lines, I guess uh, this probably has some substrates, right? So maybe the dimer is favored when substrates are present or it's somewhere in the middle of its reaction cycle or something like that. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely been a question that we've had uh, previously. Um, uh, I will I will say the prior data that we've collected um, suggests that there isn't too much of an impact of additional bleedings uh, in terms of the, the oligomers we should say. Um, and these uh, these sex uh, curves were obtained um, in, in an April environment. Or, um, so we could potentially supplement that with like added bleedings. So. Just a suggestion, I mean, <clears throat> along this line, it's really easy using SACs, especially under different two conditions uh, in both in HD or in CC. So mm -hmm. you can verify there's not dramatic ratio between one and the if you add the ligand. Mm -hmm. Some experiments worked over. Yeah, it sounds good. 